the other aspect. Not only was it cool and effective, but how frustrating is it when no one peeks you and you have to go so deep in the site and then you're kind of like, <clears throat> you're in at that point. Well then. It's like jumping into the deep end and not knowing how to swim, Henry. Did that once when I was about four. It wasn't fun. Well, we'll talk about that at halftime, maybe. I don't want to talk about it. Well, we're going into the first game here. It's going to be Dcash. Tyloo starting on the CT side, Luminosity on the Ts. And we're getting straight into this one. It's going to be quite a defensive hole from both teams here. Luminosity showing most of their hand towards the B side of the map. Three sets of armor, and they've got two sets of utility as well. Cold Zero and Fallen on the smoke grenades. Judging by the setup right now, I'd say this will be a delayed B take. Smoking towards upper and CT spawn. Flashbangs over and swarming the site with the Molotov they have as well. Fallen. He'll be the first to show. He's going to just check out toward the quad position and the fence. Double stack set up right now from Ty Lu on that position. You always can talk about the retakes that teams play on the A site. It's again another frustrating no peak situation where they will be waiting, but Fallen. He hits the shot. That's crucial. Takes down Mo and it's all for fake. They're going into the B site. This is so perfect. All of the CTs have rotated over towards A. Fallen, one player by himself on towards the A site. Smoke goes down. Looks like a standard A take coming in. He finds a kill as well. It's such a dream situation. And now he's actually able to hold the flanks as well. This is ideal. But he was very surprised if Tyler didn't do anything with this. I know. The, the one time teams don't stack up B, like you have to yeah. play the eight retake on A, and I guess what? We're going to B. <laughs> Fallen does go down, though. Somebody gets him rotating in from behind, takes out middle and back into the B tunnel. So this will hold LG in place. Okay. Pinster the man, and DD goes back, finds Taco. FNX has to find the shots on the site, does get the first, but falls immediately to Fancy. Wow. Tyloo. Considering the setup that they had there, they had the full bomb site and Fallen watching the flanks as well. Tyloo have done a remarkable job to actually get that pistol in their favor. They had the retake so far, and they took the bait completely toward the A side. It was a five on four situation going into that retake. The one skill okay. that you can't deny that the Asian teams have had, even when we've seen them key you, Sky Red, guys like Crazy Guy, Savage, they've all got aim. They've of all course, got aim. Raw, That's raw one skill. Yeah, they've always been very good at that. So. The pistol round, I, 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 they hit their shots. Look at how easy that was, especially the shot on Fallen when they rotated around. Like you said, he was watching the flank gone instantly. There shouldn't be in a way that Luminosity could drop that round, but Tyloo have found something in it, and we go to 1-0 here. So no force buy from Luminosity this round. They will be upgrading their pistols and presumably buying the AKs in the next. We can see Tyloo are adjusting themselves for that. Four Famuses and a UMP onto Didi. And so far, Luminosity just trying to work a pick with these deals, seeing if they get anything towards middle and the B storage area. Furrow has got an opportunity now, but he's taken down by attacker to open things up. With the FAMAS that he does so. Decent damage on to Didi. Taco going to try and use that Tech Knight spam through the door. There's no one really waiting for it, and if he had a repeat, it immediately attacker did have the angle locked off. Didi's playing out toward Checker right now. Just checks the off corner, make sure no one's pushed up, but he's going to fall back, and attacker's going to watch out again as that door has opened. Needs to keep his attention toward it. FNX, meanwhile, going to try and lurk down middle. No one's going to be peeking this, but Mo is up by the ticket booth, waiting to peek this, and it's actually a clever position because he won't be peeking anywhere. Somebody takes down two from the fence. Has to reset his aim, try and go toward the forklift, switches to the pistol. This is... Okay, all right, cold. I was going to say this is just <laughs> a matter of time, but apparently he's got one shot with the Deagle. This is where it gets interesting now. Luminosity definitely have the opportunity to get some AKs and a little bit of utility as well. Tyler dropped two players last round, so they need to rebuy into this, but they should be absolutely fine. You can see them adjusting now. M4 on attacker, and they actually have two UMPs now. Somebody and DD rolling with those, and they're going to be fully aware that the rifles are coming out this round. I'm interested to see how they adjust their setup. Maybe they go for an initial pick, or they hold back in a more of a retake mentality, but fast mid-take coming in from Luminosity's teams, getting up there, smokes towards middles. FNX get the first frag. He takes down Mo, and that's mid completely overrun by the Brazilians there. And FNX just going to get that Molotov out quickly toward that quad position. So the UMP is going to have to play hard against this armor. Attacker is boosted up, though. He's the one with the M4. He can do most damage. But remember yesterday, Luminosity, Fur, he came up highway and spotted that boost immediately against Mouse Sports. It's such a textbook call from Luminosity to do that. They know the, the money's still not great for Tyler. They won't be having the incendiary. He's not going to have long-range rifles necessarily. So just going for that fast mid-push there, taking them down with the AK-47s, it's a very difficult scenario for the CT. So now they have the man advantage, edging their way towards B. You can see Fur in the connector area as well, listening out for rotations. They've only got one player in the form of DD towards B as well. So this should be a guaranteed round for Luminosity at this stage. DD, though, is in behind that box at Checker. He's going to actually let them go by. It's an easy shot. Nade was getting ready to be drawn out from Cold Zero. Fur finds one, but inside of the site, more importantly, Fancy gets caught. And that fall and taking down DD makes this all too easy. Attacker can actually just stay here to save. It's a very open position, but 
Yeah. Once he hits a shot, he can just jump down and go through the door and run away. Well, like you said, very skilled players on this side. It's not a position you actually pre-fire here. He's going to come down to Furt to spot him. Timing mean, doesn't work in attacker's favor, so trying to get the nade over, but does eventually get taken down by the Galil, and that's going to be Luminosity arriving in now. Two plays, one, and we can see the money coming into the CTs. Probably won't be able to justify a buy here. Probably just get some upgraded pistols. DD with extensive amounts of cash will be able to drop a few PT 50s. He upgrades to some body armor himself, so Luminosity on track here for 2 2. And they're still going to be rolling with three AK 47s, two Galils. I wouldn't be surprised if he did this very similar tactic going in. Trying to go for that mid control. Take down any defending CTs and then go into the default from there. Somebody in shots rattling in front of him off the garage door. Just the P250 in okay. hand, but look at this boost. It's going to be three players that go over an FNX. Oh, is he going to check it again or not? Because this is a gift and he does find one on Mo. Now, does that discourage the others? Yes. Apparently so. <laughs> it should do after getting your head blown off by that. I don't think the others will be too keen to face up at that stage, but. Flurry of Frags coming in for LG now. Very simple round for them. Taking a little bit of damage, but nothing really to worry about. Round before going in favor of Luminosity. So finally now, Tyloo will be able to buy into this round. They can get an AWP on towards Fancy One. It would be Glass Cannon at this stage. Or he could get Body Armor. Just about hit exactly enough for that. So let's see where he decides to go. Whether we're going to be aggressive. He's got a very poor spawn, so he won't be able to push Squeaky Door or anything like that. But he be focusing towards middle of this stage. No up on Fallen. Obviously, he's trying to build up the bankroll here. And maybe going for something a little bit faster. Three players going towards A straight away. Uh, no one pushing through either attacker. Looked like he was poised to go into A man. I was waiting to see if the push would happen because those three players might have had an answer for this. Taco's going to open the door. If they had the... Okay, all right. Door shut. I love that. I love when that happens. It's just fun to watch. It's a good little game. He's okay, still playing. He might as well. There, perfect. Keep doing it. Why not? But now that gives away the spray. <laughs> yeah, that's a little, <laughs> little bit overextended there. Taco will get him down. I was going to say the three players, if someone does push A main, the reason I was watching the setup is because Taco can open the door and catch the player from CT in transition. Yeah. But that works as well. That absolutely works. Uh, so somebody caught in the game of opening and shutting the door does get banged through it in the end. So Fancy One now readjusting himself. The CTs are left middle, fully open. That's why Fancy One is towards a quad area. He can keep his eye on towards highway, but this is looking like an A-sided attack. We have got three players in a storage. Taka towards squeaky door as well. Just waiting for the CT reaction now. You can see Tyler don't have any grenades left in top, apart from two flashbangs. That's it. They can't really hold off a full execute here. And here it comes. Now you making the next move. Fancy. Oh, perfectly timed flash. Oh, oh an attacker. He lines up too. It took out the AWP. You would have thought that was the chance gone. But attacker with a lineup gives them a real chance. DD just needs to secure the next kill. He'll do so, but it falls down to 19 HP and Fallen's able to chase him down. Mo has to do all of this from middle. Good position from Cold, just up against the wall. Ball and plant for Fallen after the time. That'll give him the extra money, but a win for Luminosity again. Yeah, got a bit hairy there towards the end. Look, a very secure round for Luminosity. He's killing his screen right now, but double dropping the bomb as well. How do you find that third? That was around guaranteed, but unfortunately for Tyloo, it's Luminosity that pull through in round number five. So this time Tyloo will be onto a pretty much full eco here. They have got PT-50s and CZs. Haven't invested in any grenades, so they will be going for a full A stack here. Haven't got any flashbangs to push in, so they may be just going for a defensive setup and hoping that they can get some crossfires and some synergy put together. But it's looking like LG going for that fast mid take once again. It's going to be Fur with the MAC-10 to get the first kill. He takes down Didi, and he's just farming cash right now. He's the reconnaissance player and trying to establish where the stacks may lie. I think they are going to be aware now that there is a stack towards A, but the bomb is still going there from A storage. This could be risky, but they managed to capitalize Taco taking out of that then. Well, Somebody does drop bomb. Somebody gets more than that. Taco down, gun up. So one versus two now, and he's got the Galil to play with. They're split up as well. If you, oh, if you had gone around that corner, you could have isolated them into double one-on-one -on -one situation, but Fur is going to continue to lurk inside of the side as FNX does get on toward the highway. Good positioning from somebody to try and change it up, but they find him, they catch him. I think it looked like Luminosity were fully aware it's an A stack there, but it didn't seem to care. Just went running in, and Tyler did get three frags in the end, but Luminosity making sure they secure the round on a decent crossfire. Here's the replay on the screen of somebody's double kill right now. Very nice stuff from him. But 4 2 in favor of the Brazilians. Now the AWP does come out for Fallen. And we'll see where he decides to take it. Normally goes towards B storage. He has got a decent mid support. So he could try and beat the smoke there. As he will just in fact, but the CT just gets away in time. So a boost coming in once more. And they'll be trying to work that first pick from the boost position. F and X with Mo to find. Attacker again going to play this forward stance. But this again starts to favor Taco, who's at the door. Thankfully, he's not going to show himself inside, I mean, because he would have been caught off by that. Somebody wasn't in a position to watch the door if it opened. 
you almost need that second support player now in that role because that is sort of the, the, the play, the set play from the, the terrorists. If they don't win the battle at A main, they at least catch you falling back into the site. The attacker's gonna wait by the forklift instead. Moe's come over a little bit closer. Now that they see that door's open, they can just sit, put their attention in there instead. The problem is that Moe still needs to keep his attention toward middle as well. And Fu does find the first one. Good pick from him through the smoke. I'm not a fan of that from attacker. The smoke was just displacing there as well. He just walks through. This is it. This bang. is it. This is the shot. This is exactly the Fur and Taco setup. Sorry to interrupt, but that is exactly what they did to Liquid. The double smoke yeah. setup to sneak him into the corner. That works again, but it's traded by Mo. Yeah, it's very interesting creative strategy there. Walking through the, the, the wall of smokes to find the kill towards Quad. They do find the kill, but it does get returned, but Mo does drop in the end. Now it's just going to be fancy one. He hasn't got the AWP. He's going to be called CG4 and finds the kill onto Cold Zero, though. Still a three on two. This is possible. We've got DD coming in from main, uh, from middle as well. So FNX will hear him. And he's boosted. So that's an easy frag for him. And that should be the round secured now. But yes, you're absolutely right. It's quite an interesting way and an innovative uh, approach to the A bomb site. Yeah. So, so for anyone who's not familiar with it, as for closes it out, you can look it up. Adren did a video on it when reviewing the demo of this semi-final between both Liquid and Luminosity at the Major just a week ago. What they do is they drop out of smoke immediately from door, Taco throws that, and then Fur from A main lines one up that lands just behind it toward the quad, and then Taco can basically walk through two smokes and get to quad without even being seen. So they tried it there, it actually worked. Taco got the first kill. It looks like it was one of those plays where you're just doing a standard A attack and you're expecting, oh, no, no terrorists gonna come through that, and you just sneak through the smoke, it's very cool, but... We're going to round number eight now. It's going to be CZs and a Deagle for Tylo stacking towards A once again. We have got DD alone in the checkers area as well. Heavy damage being done towards Mo. But Fur with that mid control once again. He will just be making his way towards Highway now. Should be able to take down the attacker. There is the first kill from him. Somebody will love this shot for CZ. This will be going heavily in favor of Luminosity this round. Just two players remaining for Tylo. That should be somebody on 5 HP. Gets one before he drops somehow. But now just fancy one remaining by the CT truck. See if we can find anything with the CZ as well. Those ones out towards Squeaky. Really, pretty desperate situation. Cold's on four. So he needs to be a little bit careful, but there it is. Taco's just gonna win it out pretty straightforward with the AK. 6-2 Luminosity. A little bit better this time on their T-half than what they achieved against that of Mouse Sports. Well, now we have got decent money for Tyler here. They've uh, stabilized the economy. This is where Fantasy One can bring out the AWP once again. He's got a very decent spawn this time out. Before the last time he had the AWP, he had the worst spawn you can actually get. So let's see what he decides to do. We'll be making his way towards B. He has been playing towards middle prim primarily, so... Let's see if he can work this first pick. Two players for Luminosity making their way to the storage area, so he could have a real opportunity to find this first pick. He's going to be smoked out, though, so we'll have to readjust himself to checkers. And FNX is waiting way back toward the truck again in case any aggression comes out. Fancy with that AWP already smoked off and B is going to limit himself to the headshot position. Very passive angle. Won't be able to find an early pick. Somebody does though. He takes down Taco. That's out towards Squeaky and this time gets aggressive to do it. Yeah, nice stuff from him. Five and four in favor of the CTs now. It's probably the first time they've actually had the man advantage. So readjusting himself. Somebody's actually rotating. They've gone to a more passive hold on A, making the T's make the next move. And a quick little pop flash to do it. He knew Fur was going to be watching the other angle because that's the setup, Taco and Fur. It's fancy though. Here it is. If he can make this AWP work deep inside of the B site, he's got Fallen already lurking inside of that checker position. The bomb's not committed, but Fallen wants to try and equalize the situation. Thin out the defense, force them to spread across the map. It's been a little bit slow and passive about doing it. Thankfully, Didi's not peeking out from CT because there's no need for Tyloo to get aggressive. This is. Oh, all right, Fallen. He does find Fancy. It looked like there was no way he had the angle, but just spots him up near the box. And DD can't move on this, and they're going to execute. They're going to go quickly toward the B site right now, and there will be a smoke deployed immediately in front of DD. Yeah, a little bit deep. Well. That's a flash. There's a nade. Lands on his feet. No smoke still, though. And then he's going to have this lineup. If they don't check this, the M4 is going to get at least one. He falls to 4 HP, but that equals even to back up on the entry. And good flash in. DD, what a job done. Where's the smoke? Yeah, the T's didn't actually have one left, so they had to just straight up face out. I'm not sure why they're not facing it together, but Fallen does find the kill on towards DD. The CT's now pincering the bomb side. Fallen doing everything he can. He is on a two on one, but it's not going to be enough. Tyloo finally get back into this game. 6 3 now, but that all came down to DD. Fantastic work from him. Even when he's fully blind, he got a great shot onto the second terrorist players and making their way to the site. Here's the replay right now. 
First kill, I thought that was enough. He'd fall back, but he goes back in. Flash comes in, and he takes down FNX in that second frag. And you're dead right, no smoke. For some reason, I thought Fallen, Fallen still had one, but yeah. that flash, that second shot was so good. It, it was weird to have the way they were facing it, though. They should be facing, when that sort of scenario, you should be facing together. At least you had the refrag at that point. It was a little bit too late. Managed to get him down to low HP, but he shouldn't be getting two kills there. Fancy one now, getting confident. He's pushing into A storage. Fallen to find the first frag, though. There it is. Fancy one tries to get the turn, but misses the shot. Goes down to low HP, but attacker doing what he can on the A site. Damage being inflicted to both sides, but it's still an equal situation of 4 4. Fancy's gonna fall all the way back off this as well with the AWP. Down to 44. Taco continues to try and spray through the door as well. And FNX is boosted. They haven't been putting a lot of mid pressure on Tyloo. This is a rather passive CT side in terms of that mid. Stance, but look at Mo. Mo's position inside a main. He could actually walk out, and FNX isn't going to be ready for this at all. Does he check it though? He's out of sight. Oh, they're going to pass each other. FNX turn to the right. Mo turn back. They're go both gone. No information gathered from either side, but this wow. does give Mo a chance to walk all the way around to B. And FNX not spotting this. His teammates aren't going to be ready for this at all. And there's three inside of the B site as well. FNX will get towards the vent. Cold's got the first kill, but watch it. Mo needs to go quickly. He's starting to try and move a little bit faster. It's down to just one player left in the site. It's attacker. Oh, he's going to wait. This is even more clever, even more sneaky bomb dropped. And there's the shot. Mo's got there in time. Down to the one on one. What? But FNX turns around and hits him. What a shot there from FNX at the end. As you said, the timing is really working out in Tyloo's favor there in terms of Mo coming in for the backstab. And it looked like Tyloo had a huge advantage going into that two on one situation. But FNX just seems like he's just two on point today. And that's a full reset for Tyloo after winning the last round. They're going to $1,400 into number 11. And so Luminosity adjusting himself now. Two Mac 10s. They just be going in, all guns blazing, presumably towards the A bomb site, considering the setup right now. Could go check out middle as well. Nades going towards highway, and then we'll be boosting up as well. So this buy from Tyler will just be CZs and PT50s. DD with some body armor, but this could cost him two. Taco and Cold started off well. Taco on the Mac 10. He finds two kills with it, worth the investment. But Fancy and DD doing some damage. Getting two kills back, and DD. Has picked up an AK on that because he finds the kill on the off-site. Bomb's gonna get planted. Fur's gonna go on the hunt to try and take this AK back, and he will do so successfully. Not only that gets the extra six hundred dollars where it is with a Mac 10. Lovely stuff there from LG. Does Cold effective. have a cold? Uh, Coughing uh, a little bit there. Was he? Cold I, with I a cold. Looking. We'll have to find out, Matt. Well, maybe we can ask Mix at halftime. Maybe. We can, we can find out. Maybe, yeah. Anyway, where was I? Don't know. Counter strike. Probably saying something more important than what I was saying. Yeah, probably. I would assume that's quite fair. But the money situation for Tyler, I said they potentially could be going to here, but they're going to be going for the force by So three M4s, two families, no kids, a distinct lack of utility, not a single incendiary, one smoke grenade. This round will be very difficult. But I like uh, Mo's position here. You don't see that very often. It can be very effective every now and then. He's above the main entrance there in the middle. But Luminosity back into all the default. See that position from Mo. He's going to be baited in by Fancy One. He needs to face very aggressively to take all the aggro away. And now it looks like the Wall of Smoke's coming in for LG now. I think this position could actually pay dividends for Mo. Yeah? Actually, could. It's nifty. We don't see this very often. Yeah. FNX going to walk directly under it. As long as he doesn't spot a gun barrel by some off chance, he won't. Just not common. It's going to be looked at. FNX goes down. But the information given Mo has to fall away from this. Needs to be careful he doesn't get peaked. Fallen was waiting for the angle in the AWP. Where's the backup? Immediate shot. That's exactly it. There's no one peeking out from white box to try and get a refrag on it. Like if you get to try and fall back, so you hide until your teammates there with you. And then if you do die, at least you can get the refrag. Like both teams are at a risk at least. That was just full advantage for Luminosity. And that kill they found, considering the buys, is a huge, huge lead now for the T side. As it is 8-3, and there's no grenades left for the CTs whatsoever. Three in the A side from Tyloo. I'm going to come back to a point really quickly because somebody takes down Taco. That equals it up. But if they're going to stack up this site. DD needs to be getting information on B, and he was just cowering inside. There would have been no chance for him to shut down a push on that site. Thankfully, it is going on to A. As somebody's doing all the work, he gets too cold the second to drop. And it's on Fallen. Bombs dropped. Oh, by forklift and Fallen. Uncharacteristic miss. Hits the second one, but it's onto the lag, and he can't even get back toward that player. So t attacker stays alive. And Ty Lu pick up the round. Yeah, so Mo did get that first frag in that interesting boost spot in middle, but answered back, and it's somebody who actually turns into the hero here, pushing through aggressively towards the main, the A main entrance, the jumping shot to take down in the second. Gets three kills in the end, so good work from him. But still not out of the woods just yet. This round would reset Tyloo once more. So they have got the orb. And it's going to be Captain Mo with it this time. So he'll be going towards A, maybe towards the squeaky door, as he actually will go in as well. I actually like this pick a lot. Not going to have any challenges here. Looking like 
behind them, so we'll be focusing our efforts towards middle. Flash and two players to push it this time. Rather than the standard one, and Moe's gonna find two shots, takes Taco and Fallen. Traded though, and well traded at that, because Cold and Fur get both kills the other way. Ty Lu's still gonna push this. Somebody knows the bomb's down, so he wants to establish this presence. And playing this off corner, FNX is gonna have to be careful when he walks around and somebody hits the angle. So bomb is still firmly in the control of Ty Lu. Yeah, three on two now. And they have, like you said, got full control of the bomb. Fur and Cold Zero. Actually, both towards the other side of the map right now. They're hoping that someone's still on the B site and they can find a rotation kill or something, but with the bomb in that position, I'm not really sure why they're wasting so much time here. We have got Cold Zero on 6 HP, so it's going to be a very difficult situation for them to do anyway, but maybe going for something here. Cold Zero waiting in T-spawn while Fur tries to negate himself through CT spawn, checking every angle as he goes. They still have 40 seconds here, so if Fur was able to find a frag onto the A side and kind of separate the, t the CTs and get them confused, then maybe we do have an opportunity here. Yeah. Oh, spotted up, though the feet tries to spray down cold, can't land it through the wall. Somebody falls away with 4 HP. 29 seconds, they still have to retrieve that bomb, and the lurk from Fur as he tries to flank them out. Attacker was watching it the entire time. And now they know where Cold is with 6 HP himself. Good spray down through the gap in the truck, but that's all it's gonna do. Yeah, not really much for Cold to do with this. 10 seconds remaining, 6 HP. He has got somebody on low, but this round's over. That's a very good adjustment from Ty Lu. We saw Mo with the decent spawn. He goes towards the squeaky door area. Like I said, Luminosity was so focused in tunnel vision towards middle, they didn't really consider that being a possibility, the push from squeaky. As Mo picks up two frags in the side, he falls back. They get the bomb down as well. It's somebody complimenting him with the A main aggression as well. So, Luminosity... So I was going to say, Cold dying that late, he should have just fallen back and saved because he's limited to a Tech-9. That would have given him an AK that they wouldn't have had. Well, going to round number 14, and instead the money has been affected for Luminosity. Tech-9s and three rifles. Look at uh, wants to find this pick towards A storage pretty quickly. Somebody on the other side there. And he's going to be an A side of the pack. You see no presence towards B whatsoever from the Brazilians. They have got smokes here, so they could do more of a set piece. As Taco does spam away through the door. Smoke gonna come out as well from DD to delay over at B, but somebody wants in. Somebody wants in desperately to this house. It's on fire. Now the room is on fire. It's not Anders and Semler, it's somebody in cold who gets the second kill. Attacker's gonna shut the door again, fall back to the fence. That gives Cold the information. He's at least close by, so the bounce Molotovs, the flashes as well. It's gonna force them out. Attacker has no chance as fur. We'll collect him. Good shot from Mo rotating over to the truck. A smoke down in front of him. This gives the bomb site firmly in the reach of LG. Good nade in. Does further damage to FNX, but the bomb planted. Yeah, very difficult situation now. Mo has found one kill so far, but he does change up to the M4 for the retake. For spotting DD towards highway now. So they are going to be aware of both positions of the CTs. He's trying to stay together and make sure they find frags and trade effectively here. They need to make sure they keep two players alive. Still desperate to find the first kill. They do manage to get it as well. Taking down third. Bomb ticking away now. Need to find that next one. Both players towards A main. Cold Zero coming in to take down DD. There it is. One on one. Gonna go for this defuse as well. It's a long angle. Cold's gotta get here. He's holding it. Cold needs to find the shot. Just barely sprays it down. Doesn't go for the controlled tap onto the head, but still finds the kill. Yeah, I don't mind that decision from Murray. He had no idea where the last player was and took a gamble. He wasn't towards A main, worked out, but just one second, I think, was separating it from the full defuse. And that's a difficult reset for Tyloo. They only get $1,400 going into this round. All right, if the way they wear their headsets isn't weird enough, the way that hat is worn, <laughs> I'm, I'm triggered. Was that on top of his head? You wear hats. Did, did you ever do that? It looked like Robin's hat sitting on Machine's head. <laughs> is what it actually <laughs> looked like. Oh, poor Alex in his massive head. Robin approves. So, two rifles and three CZ now for Tyler. It's going to be Mo actually taking down Fur to kick things off. So that's a fast, aggressive face from Fur. Goes down middle by himself. Does get punished for it, but FNX finding the kill in return. Four on four now. CT still have a massive disadvantage with the pistols they have. It's going to come down to somebody whether he can do anything with this rifle. This single smoke from Taco on A, though, has forced two players to draw the attention from Ty Lu. So Fancy and Attacker are here. That gives the single entry kill to FNX on DD, and there's nobody left in the B site. So they can have Taco. It'll yeah. make it three on three, but it's going to be the retake. Got to get the spawn planted quickly, though, because somebody's already coming through the vents. No one's watching it. He's got a great opportunity to just walk out spots one. Information, if he just holds his trigger, he gets a gift on the cold. They still haven't planted this bomb. The rotations have already made it, and they still don't have full control of this site, or at least comfortable enough to go for the plant. They'll do so now. 
But somebody does perfect job rotating in. And now look at this. Attacker takes it down to just FNX. He sprays one. Has the angle to play. Molotov's not going to reach him, but Attacker holds this trigger down and finds the kill. Yeah, great round from Attacker there, considering Tyler only had two rifles going into that one. And they've come back and actually won the three on three situation with two players remaining as well. So the final score of the first half will be 9 6 in favor of Luminosity, but Tyler making a convincing case for himself against. Arguably the world's best team right now. This won the current major. Getting six rounds on the CT half. I wouldn't say that's a bad day of the office. Definitely not over yet. They can get the pistol here. That ties things up. So, Luminosity, this is like a map they say. They don't play too often. They're trying to get better at it and try to get more experience in their land. But you can definitely see some uh, chinks in the chain. There is some also some innovation. I mean, I, I keep... I I mean, the most obvious one, because we haven't seen it before, is that Smoke one. I keep bringing it up. But th they're trying to, to establish their own style on it. You're right. But Tyloo looks, I mean, fairly decent. Six rounds. They did get a pistol on that, so it's really only it's the early buy. So really, only four gun rounds that they did win on the CT side. But accuracy's there. Retakes have actually been impressive. I'll give them that. Actually, they have um, players like Attacker as well. Even when they're up against it in the difficult situations on the retake, he seems to have very snappy aim that's getting them into very key positions. Somebody as well dropping 16 frags. And the one, the one I do want to point out in terms of frag totals is Fancy. He's the AWP player. He only gets four that half. He's the player we talk about a lot. He's like the star player of the side, right? Everyone thinks, like, look to him for this great all potential. But it's actually Mo who actually stepped up with the AWP towards the end of the first half. He found them a couple of rounds with that aggressive push. But we'll see what Tyler can bring to us on the T side here. So three sets of armor for them. And they've got two smokes as well. Looking like all five players will be heading towards A side of the map. We actually have the bomb and B storage. So this potentially be a B split coming in here. They have got the smoke grenades to work with. So we'll see what kind of tactic they present to us so far. No aggression from the CTs. You can see it's a full retake towards the A side. Just one player towards the CT truck. And we can see Fur now edging in towards B storage. So he's trying to get information here. But as I said, very defensive hold from Tyler, actually jumping towards T-Spawn, just trying to see if anyone does push. Her falling back taps away does spot somebody out. He won't know that it's somebody, so to him it literally is just somebody. Exactly. But Fur does take a little bit of damage, down to 91. And they're just going to continue to exchange blows. No one rotating over. You'd think ta Attacker might think, eh, I'll just come through B-Connector, get, get up close, catch Fur off, but... They're still trying to work the map over toward A, and they are setting up now towards Squeaky. So look for an explosive play from Ty Lu. It is going to be the retake strategy from LD, LG. Excuse me. This is when we'll see the smokes towards Highway and Quad. They'll probably flash over the bomb site and uh, try and rush the plant down. This will be perfect considering the setup LG have got. So they'll definitely get the bomb planted here. And so whether they can handle the retake, LG do have a kit, so they can afford to do this. It's the first smoke coming in. Oh. The side. And they are going to save the second smoke for the yep. post plant, which I like. And DD is going to go forward and try and hold off these rotations. Nade out toward truck doesn't do much to follow him, but now he has to fall back because he has to let the rotations come in. And at all three players, four now rotating down from CT. They have to confront DD first, who's got a tech nine in a pistol round. And that's going to be so problematic as he hits the headshot on FNX. Not only that, he's able to fall away. Pre fires toward Taco, tries to get the read toward highway. Taco does get the kill. Now it's up to Fur to take over A main. That would have made the full retake a possibility, but they still have grounds to stand on inside of that garage. Attacker is completely limited by the flames, though, and Taco does find him. So it's on to Mo. Inside Squeaky. They pass each other. Somebody goes back through the smoke, blinds it up, nearly finds the shot toward Fallen, but he hits that instead. It's going to be pretty close, but it looks like Luminosity have got this one. Did have the kit there, so another retake coming in for the CT side. It's quite an interesting strategy from Tyloo. Like he said, they saved that second smoke just to give them more of an advantage during the retake because the CTs go through and delay them a little bit further through that smoke. They had the raid boss on towards DD. He wasn't able to capitalize. Found one frag. That was about it. And then a really strong retake of Luminosity. Just real crisp aim of the USPs as they came back to the bomb site. They picked up that Tech 9 as well and gave Tyler a taste of their own medicine. We're going to the second round now, Tyler with the bomb down as well. Won't be forcing into this one. So Desert Eagles and PT-50s will be getting AKs in the next. So somebody, though, takes a lot of damage at the start of the round. That's all the MP9 from Fur. And now Tyler are set up with five players towards B storage. They have got any utility here. So it's just going to be a burst and play a contact strategy towards the B side. Tyler, who fancy, in they go. First here to hold it down. MP9, first kill, second as well, but has to switch to the pistol because they are still pressing. Thankfully, Fallen's come over and he'll keep his teammate alive. FNX will close out the last kill. Yeah, very simple round there for Luminosity. So, this is where it gets interesting, though. This is where Tyler get five AKs. And the only problem with this is they actually don't have anything to work with in terms of utility. One flashbang, and that's 
actually it. Here we go, a couple more now. So they have five fast bangs in total, Matt. No smokes at all. So they come down to probably boosting up towards middle. A similar strategy we saw from LG on their first force by trying to swarm that area with as much manpower as possible and take advantage of the AKs. They are gonna bust out now with these AKs toward middle. No one checked out sandbags. DD might get FNX, but that's going to convince them even further that they've got control. Two players stacked up. MP9 goes to work first from Fur. This will give them away. Now they press in an attacker. <laughs> they, that's an odd stack up. I would like to see the MP9 fully commit to the peak, give up the fact that there's only one, and then Cold come out late. Instead, they fall back and just gives them up, and attacker sprays both down. I don't think attack even realized there was two there. He got two kills for his money, and uh, he looked a bit surprised a bit. But there it is. Like I said before, it's exactly what Luminosity did on their force fight. It's very difficult to hold that down on the CT side when you only have those SMGs and Famous combo. You can't really do much about it. You don't have the incendiaries to hold off the fast boost and Tyler do that perfectly. It would have been interesting had they not realized that Fallen was there with the, the Famous behind that sandbags area as well after the first kill went down. But as I said, attacker is coming with a double spray down. Shuts down any potential they had. But it is a buy coming in from Luminosity. They have got the AWP on towards Fallen. So this is an interesting investment. Famous on Cold Zero and attacker with the CZ. Let's see what Fallen can do with this. Uh, going aggressive every to smoke. I'm desperate to make this work. Fur. Oh, tries to get clever. Let's attacker go. Or excuse me, one go by and attacker gets the kill though. Have to rotate over. Fallen gets to heaven quickly with the AWP. Can he deny the plant? Not likely. He's in the hit. default spot. All right, he did take some damage, but cold through the wall actually does hit it. It's not often we see it. But it is every round they check it, so Fancy puts himself in a vulnerable position. That brings it back down to four versus four. No kits, though, for LG. An attacker's gonna hug the wall toward headshot, toward that generator, watch the entry points. But Taco's rotated, hits one with the CZ, nearly gets awkward. As DD turns around and finds him with the AK, but it's still working out as Cold comes in. DD trades again, but it's he that remains versus two. He has to get the Molotov out toward the bomb. He's got it down to the one versus one, and they have to face this fallen. You can't do that. The AWP and DD's playing it. Smart goes for the peak late and Fallen thinks he's gone. He gets the kill as well. Great round there from Tyler. Nice work from DD as well. Four kills for him on the retake. I'm surprised Luminosity went for that one. They're considering they had no kits and Tyler found that first frag up to the B side completely. Uh, considering the money situation, I thought Luminosity may fall back and just try to save the AWP, but they went for it. Actually, very made a very convincing case for themselves as well. It's this last touch. Fallen went for the fake defuse. Smart play from DD not to face. And he comes back and actually forces now Luminosity into a pretty much full eco here. PT50 is in a USP. And we've got Fancy One with the MAC-10. Somebody with the UMP just farming some cash here with those SMGs. They know the CTs will be fully in this situation. Okay. Cold starts it off well, though, but Attacker and Fancy Attacker continuing to add to his totals. He's got a great game going. He's at 18 kills. Somebody not far behind and DD at 16. So 17 for somebody and 16 for DD. Fancy's going to take down Fallen. And Luminosity. Pistol plus second round. It's the same start. It's completely mirrored as the early buy for Ty Lu picks them up the first gun. And now a chance to secure one more against these pistols. Good pickup from Fur. Bomb planted. He might just look to try and do further economic damage with this. But DD waiting for it. Spots him up. Doesn't hit the shot. Well, Fur will be the last player remaining now. He has got the AK-47. Bomb planted. The round will be going in favor of Ty Lu. But Fur can save his weapon. Definitely helps boost... The economy for the CT's next round, but it's going to be tidy. They do find him in the end. Edging their way back into this. That's three rounds in a row now after losing the pistol. 11 9. And you see the buy coming through Mossy. It's actually not the most stable economy they've got here. So Taco deciding how he's going to buy into this one. Two Famuses, two M4 so far. No all from Fallen, that's for sure. And he's going to round number 21. Huge advantage here for the terrorists in terms of firepower. And we'll see what the CT's do to kind of combat this when they go for an aggressive pick. and boosting up to the vents to kick things off. Cold Zero. And behind the sandbags again this time. Won't be two players there, so there won't be anyone to lead him and you know, give him up this time. Follow me, attacker. Let me show you where we're hiding. I promise it's worth it. They do have the boost inside vents, though, from B, so this gives a little bit more support to that mid position from Fur. Fallen naturally is in checker, still just gets away now because he had to do the boosting. So Cold will at least have a support system. A chance to get away from that sandbags position if they try and overwhelm him, but this Molotov, it's lined up. Fancy, this is the default. Throw it in toward the vents, force for back out of them. And it lands, but it's light. It's shallow because the vent not broken out. It 
Hits toward the box, and Fur can actually stay here. This might be overlooked now. DD spotted up. Fur's gonna hold the angle. Goes for the shot. The spray down nearly gets two because Fancy's there as well, but he can't overcommit to it. Has to reload. Oh, this gets desperate. Falls away, and the timing was off. Fur overstays his welcome. Cold does get one more back toward mid, but it's on to Fallen as they try and execute. He's looking the wrong direction. Somebody's already got to the generator. Three on three now. Retake coming in from Luminosity. Bomb will be planted on the B side as well, so they're gonna be coming in of all they can with the Famous. It's gonna be FNX to find kill on somebody, but. They are desperate now, no kits, they need to act fast. They are smoked out from the bomb side. Flash in through the smoke initially that's now dissolved. FNX and Taco. They're gonna wait for Cold to get toward heaven. The attacker's gonna take the peak. Cold's got the first shot on Fancy, attacker goes down. Too easy on the retake for LG. Yeah, very nice stuff on them, keeping three players alive as well. It was a difficult buy for them, so gotta be getting that full defuse in, upgrading their weapons to the AKs and M4s as well. So. They're bouncing back here. The money should be relatively strong for Ty Lee. You see Fancy One does have eight and a half thousand dollars. So presumably we'll be bringing out the AK. Actually going to be bringing no AWP to the party this time. Attacker will be getting a drop from him. So we're going to run over 22 now. No AWP for the CTs yet either. So interesting round coming up. Have a look at the CT money. This will be around the reset if they were to lose it. So we must need this just to make sure they can keep some weapons in their favor. And looking like an aggressive push towards these doors. Two players challenging them. Two boosted already down. Cold not able to peek this smoke off. He's trying to use the gap, but he can't quite see toward the cubby because even though there's a gap, his angle is covered off, as you see there. Does spot one when he jumps that time, but they're so close. He's not going to know this spot. The boost though comes out late. Mo just barely get his aim reset. FNX tries to follow in. They're going to get a third player in this mid position as well as Taco shows up. Doesn't kill anyone, but that could have caught them off. Fur, meanwhile, has gone for the flank. He's going to back off of this. He's hoping that Fallen can discourage them on this A-take, and they will eventually rotate back, but it's only Fallen inside of the A-site. Good pickup. Does take Fancy, but they're committed. Molotov out. It's a little bit late. Somebody's already through it. Gets the shot. Attacker's going to wait toward Forklift, but he has to fight alone with three HP. He'll do very well here to do anything with this. The bomb is down on the site. He's currently stuck toward Forklift as well. Got the CTs pincering him in from Squeaky Door. 50 seconds to play with. An impossible situation, but... I'd be bringing out some sort of magic here. As he is edging towards CT spawn, trying to find that first frag. The problem is the CT has rotated towards the connector area. As I said, plenty of time to play with here. He can read this well, could get the kill on towards Taco, but he's ready, he's set up. This is almost going. Oh, the timing doesn't work out, but somehow does come out on top. There was a chance there for Attacker, but Taco just adjusting his aim just in time. We do have a timeout coming in for Tyloo now. The money is in disarray, they got about 2,400 average across the team, so got to be working out how they approach the next rounds. But it's looking very comfortable for Luminosity now. So Tyloo again putting up reasonable numbers against a top tier team. Knocked out Liquid yesterday if you weren't with us. Semi-finalists who had match point twice against Luminosity, let's not remind anyone. Had it 21 times total in that series. Yes. Got taken down by Tyloo, so that would have given them confidence to go against Luminosity, who they also played in their opening game, keep in mind as well. But I think the bigger storyline that I'm getting at there is Liquid. That's that's rough. Matt, can I ask you a question? <sighs> I guess. What are you doing this weekend? Oh, that is that's a reasonable question. I haven't I don't normally plan my life further than an hour in advance. Let me see, what dates this weekend? Uh I think I'm in Sweden. Okay, interesting. A nice little holiday or working or what? I, th I, can't, I think I'm working. I don't know. It depends okay. if I get fired before then or not. We'll find out. Why? What are you thinking? Well, I was thinking about going to this really cool event that's happening this weekend. It's called the DreamHack Masters in Malmo. Oh, I heard about that. Isn't, yeah. that, isn't that a League of Legends tournament? No, absolutely not. Good, because I hate that game. But <laughs> you are right. You can get your tickets at <laughs> masters.dreamhack.com. VIP on the floor, free food. You can meet some of the players, etc. And if you uh, don't feel like getting that close to me, or Henry, because he kind of smells, you can get general admission tickets, a little bit less uh, less priced, and you can sit in the bowl. <laughs> What's the sound? Apparently Robin has an old cast. <laughs> Just throwing stuff at us now. It's Speaking of getting fired, can we get security on that blonde-haired Swedish guy? <laughs> I know, they're, I know they're all blonde, but the one that, you know, used to play in NIP. He just came in throwing some nuts at us. It's not the first time someone's thrown nuts at you, Henry. No, it's true. But he's not happy about something. We'll find out later. But there it is. It's going to be 13-9 now, and it's going to be the pause coming 
back into the game. There's going to be no money for Luminosity here. They will be just doing a partial buy with Tech Nines and Body Armor here. they have got HG grenades and flashbangs and a couple of smokes as well. This will be round number 14 going in favor of Luminosity. I'm not sure what the options are for Tyler. There are two smokes. All five players heading towards B. Slow things down. Web for the initial utility used by the CTs and smoke towards upper and towards spawn. And we'll see whether they can find the first frag here. It's all about getting that first kill. If they can find it, swarm the bomb side makes things very uncomfortable for the second CT. For a quick pop flash out, that's going to go perfectly. You guys get them all, but you can't find a spray down on multiple. He does get the second one now, but that allows Didi the time to wrap back around and catch him out through the site. Most blinded up though, he's gonna sit underneath of Heaven. DD gets Taco, so there's still good position for Mo right now. FNX is above them, gonna drop down, not get spotted by this. They have vent control. They need to find DD out toward the box. But again, Mo's still here. Luckily, they dropped the bomb. Somebody sets the crossfire though. Cold goes down, it's just on FNX. He walks out, one kill, but can he find Mo? Who's got good positioning, but can't spray it down. FNX will prevail in the situation and Luminosity will hit the 14th round. Yeah, FNX does it again, another 2 on 1 situation with low HP as well. Manages to come out top in the aim duel towards City spawn. It's a big round for Luminosity. One point away from that point now, so 14-9. Terrorist will be able to buy back into this, but it's a difficult one. You can see two players are right head armor as well. That's not normally a big deal, but against M4s, that definitely counts. They have got two smoke grenades and a Molotov, that's about it. So another very low buy for them as we go into round number 24. We'll be focusing their efforts towards the East Doors area as well, but Cold Zero going into the push. We saw this last um, last half, didn't really work out for them. Can Cold Zero do any better? Good shot down for the first one, but attack attacker is there to respond. Somebody's out toward Toxic. Near the James Bardoff spot. <laughs> and they may actually rely on him to get some information because they've given up on that A position. We say trades favor the offense, but right now they haven't thinned the defense because Luminosity is still putting some pressure on the middle right now in this boost. If it kills Fallen, then they can start to wrap, but if not, Fallen's got a great chance to actually pull the advantage back to his team. I guess thankfully in that sense, he's rotated away. Four on four now. As I said before, the terrorist with nothing to work with in terms of executing the site. It's going to have to straight up face and take the angels with Two flashbangs, getting naded as well. You can see the three CTs waiting for them on the A side, so they'll be pushing it themselves here. It's going to be actually Tyler coming out on top. Find two frags now, got the man advantage as they make their way onto the bomb site. Taco spraying down though, does catch Fancy. Gets back in behind the forklift, but doesn't realize somebody's gone that far into the site, so peeks out a little bit too far, gets caught by it. And Fur's going to try and rotate over from the truck, but watch the positioning right now as well of Mo. Inside mid, he's actually not peeking this. He's not looking the right direction, so this will allow Fur past him. And somebody watching A main is going to spot him. Jumping up, good shot. Great shot from somebody. It looked like he'd be dead immediately on that. So as I was saying, Tyler didn't have anything to work with in terms of getting to the bomb side, but they didn't have to. It seemed like Luminosity wanted to give them an opening into the round. They went for the aggressive A main push and tried to gain some intel there, but they had three terrorists waiting for them. So two frags established. Tyler comes down to the two on one and well, to win the round. So Luminosity now towards Anika themselves. So PT50s, USPs. And Tyler reading this pretty well as well. They actually have an AMAC 10 to work with, so the send attacker in first and search for any stacks that may be coming in. There's actually four players towards the A side for Luminosity, so Tyler's slowing things down, trying to gain information now. Tyler is going to slowly walk out and toward a main as well. More and more and get a setup toward that fence position. Did that bounce far enough? It did. Taco's extremely low. Still manages to get a kill as he swings out. But fancy Aditi. The found space on the entry. They've cleared out behind the forklift. Aditi has to wait for the flames to extinguish, but will advance. And Taco with 6 HP. The first one to take damage in the round is the last to die. Tai Lu. We talk about these Chinese teams. We get hyped up about the Asian region, and then they yeah. come over and they don't really achieve much. But they knock out Liquid, and up against the reigning major champions just a week ago. They've got double digits and it's 14-11 on map one. It's been very convincing so far, especially in the second half. So we're to run number 26. They actually have Luminosity onto another partial buy here. So they've got four Desert Eagles and two smokes. And it's looking like a straight up B rush potentially from Tyler here. All five players come into this side of the map. And this could put them on 14-12. That's getting pretty interesting. As LG now Pushing their own smokes to be fur, boosting up in the box again, but he gets taken down. The first kill comes in for somebody, and they fully flash Fallen as well. Second frag should be easily obtained here. And Fallen just runs in with the P2000, somehow gets one. FNX chimes in. 
somebody finally gets him, but it still isn't done. Ooh. Yes, it's up next. Lovely shot with the Deagle there. Three on two now in favor of Luminosity. That's big, because it gives them the man advantage still if he goes down. Yeah. Or even if the other player stays alive on Ty Lu's side, if attacker stays up. Got so much more strength on this take, but somebody's going to equal it anyway. Takes down Cold Zero, flash up, Molotov to follow on Heaven. Won't be able to cover the, cover the cross. But they don't have a smoke. They've used the last one. So the post plant's not going to be as strong. They've been relying on holding off LG, but again, it's with pistols this time. It's not like they've got the power to come back in. The rotation, though, coming in right now from Taco. It's in behind, but it's spotted out as that somebody sees it, throws the nade, and the Deagle on the repeak is going to be sprayed down from an AK, and somebody's being smart about this. Discipline, not going to reface this. They need to find the second player. The longer they stay alive, the better chance they'll have of holding off this defuse, and somebody finds FNX. Yeah, he follows it up. That's brilliant play from him. Yeah, got a bit uncomfortable there for Ty Lu, but holding strong, and as I said, somebody gets all five kills as well. He's currently on 29 frags. having a fantastic game here. Natali gave themselves an extra round, so 14-12 now, but Luminosity back onto the weapons after a double eco, so he's going to be fallen on towards the AWP. No will be for Tai Lu, but they're looking very strong with these AKs. It's actually going to be three rounds in a row for them as well, so this one's definitely not over yet. This is a massive round for Tai Lu. They can deny map points. This could be going the distance. This actually could. I mean, this is, again, convincing stuff. Absolutely. From Tai Lu. Mo. He sits way back so he can pop the flash out off the corner of the garage. And they execute, they run in, but they haven't got smoke deep in the site. It's late to come out, and that allows FNX to pick up two from the top of highway. Taco's limited back toward the truck. There's no one else in the site, but it's still going to be a retake that's favorable as they sit four versus three. Bomb was dropped on the way through. Captain Moe's not picked that up. Just now realizes he's run past it and has to step back, but it's still on the ground. They could have gone with that second smoke that came out. There's no one near. They could have had this plant already done. And they've just allowed Fur to walk back into the site. He's found by Didi. That's crucial. But Bomb's still down. In the corner, it got thrown up on top of the barrels. But we have got the man of Arch still in favor of Tyloo. Fallen towards Secret Spawn as well. It's going to be called Zero to find the kill on towards Fancy One. But it is returned straight away. No takes him down. Now Fallen. Stuck in this horrible situation. He'll be pushing onto the bomb site with the P2000, but somehow gets some footing into this. Gonna be taken down, and that's the round in favor of Tai Lu. It was a retake setup from Luminosity, not working out for them as Tai Lu go for that fast take into this one the bomb site. As you said, the bomb get, get dropped. I think you did some uh, well, scouting work there. Where's it go? It was up on top of the barrels in the corner where we often see people boosted, but I was curious where they didn't pick it up and Mo was so close to it. If it, somehow there was a glitch there where it was ungrabbable, it wasn't. They were just taking their time to find the kills. It nearly yeah. cost them. This is getting very interesting now, Matt. Luminosity onto pretty much full eco. They've got some 5.7s and CZs, but that's about it. As we enter round number 28, this could tie things up at 14-14. Entirely making a great case for themselves for this tournament. This is impressive. Luminosity flash in with the pistols. Need to find kills here, though, and they both go down. Taco and Fur. FNX gets the boost over middle, and that's heard and spotted. Taken down by Mo. This is good. Good read from Tai Lu again. Fallen's going to sit in the corner. That's a little bit easy. Does find one kill. Call it what you want, but attacker's there, and it's all down to Cole. This is another round for Ty Lu. We're tied. 14-14, Henry. We are. Who would have thought that was coming? Luminosity down. In terms of the cash next round, they get... I think it's almost maximum loss spend as this did. I think that's four in a row now. For the money... Oh, it is five now. So five rounds, $3,400 coming in. So could get double ops they wanted to, which they will. It's going to be Cold Zero and Fallen on those. So they haven't run that setup as of yet on the CT side. I think this will be very beneficial for them. But if they can close this out 16-14, obviously don't want to get reset again here. So we'll see what they can do. Let's get into round number 29. Five AKs once more for Tyler. We haven't seen Fancy One really go huge with the AWP at all this game. Might not matter if they win it, though. As you say, all in from Luminosity. Fallen goes for the quick peek down toward the B site. Second AWP right now in the hands of Cold Zero is going to be at middle. Another passive A hold right now from LG. Make sure I emphasize that D when I say that term. Yes. But they are still sitting back right now passively. Ty Lu's side. Two players over toward the B tunnels. And again, not a lot of pressure on A early. So Ty Lu's expecting a push from Luminosity. Navi-esque, isn't it? Just sit back, wait, see if anyone pushes you, get ready to execute. They've got a full buy here. They still have four smokes available as well. And once again, we'll be edging towards the B side of the map. You can see attacker, somebody, and Mo waiting for the aggression, as you said. But the double orb setup means 
they mostly don't really have to hunt for intel as much as they would. Gonna have to turret on either side of the map. They'll be falling towards B with Fur. Time ticks away now. We hit the 45 second mark. CT's holding up, but Tyler will be smoking towards middle. This is the B split coming in, so trying to show as much attention as they can towards mid. DD will be going there by himself with the rest of his players. Prepare themselves and be storage. Good pick up from FNX though, takes down DD. Pop flash into his own smoke from Fur. Tries to save Fallen, but he's gone down. Fur needs to find the angle. It's headshot position from somebody who drops back in. Good shot from Cold. Still 3-3. Three, three. But Bomb going down and Moe's gonna offset that. Bring it in the favor of Tai Lu, who have a chance to break Luminosity, let's not forget. And they have to walk in through a smoke in heaven. LG do get in though. FNX with one, tries to turn around. Attacker's got it, it's all on Cold Zero. He's got an AWP up close, goes for the drop. Quick shot, does find it against Attacker, who goes down and Cold needs to hold the angle. There's no need to peek. Mo can just oh. sit back on this and Cold's gonna have to force the play. Bomb planted in a way that he can actually hold this defuse. If he's clever about it, goes to tap it. But now he's not sure where he is, spots him late, and this time he has to commit. It's ticking away further, and Cold's gonna hold the angle again. There's no need, and now as he commits, it goes the other direction. Cold's got the open, it's a reset from Tyloo. That's amazing. Cold's heard that. He, like you said, he could have gone for the full defuse, I think. He could have actually made that work. He wasn't confident in himself to do it, but Tyloo going for that. Long default at the start, the B split comes in, Fallen unable to find a frag on the bomb site with the AWP. And now Tai Lu, there with map point, at round number 30. Luminosity, like I said, after winning the last round, oh, I said they even didn't, they only get $3,400 into this one, so they actually going to get Famuses and an M4. This is kind of crazy. Tai Lu could actually have a very strong chance of taking the last round here. Are you believing that? I'm just thinking that, I think it's Attacker that's wearing his hat like that, like Olaf doesn't wear his shoes. So if you don't wear your shoes, let your headset fall off the back of your head and wear a hat like that, you must be a god. That, that's the way to be the best player in CS. That's pretty much all we can gather from this. I'm, I, I'm, I'm going with it, because right now, just to give you an idea, Attacker sits at 23 kills. Somebody's got a 30 bomb in regulation against LG. That somebody is somebody, just to, to clarify. 30 kills for him, 25 for DD. Top on LG right now, Cold Zero and FNX both on 26. It's actually six clean rounds in a row for Tyloo. Looking incredibly strong here. We said this again yesterday when they played against Luminosity on Mirage. They looked very poor on their CT side. Their T side of like, team play seemed very, very good. And they're finding rounds and working very well in the clutches. Somebody, as you said, stepping up in almost every key situation here. So using this timeout, they get, always, they get it as well. They're kind of adjusting themselves and working on how they approach this next round. Question is, do they go for the Hail Mary play and go straight rushing into a side and try and mix things up for the last one or they slow it right down again to a similar approach knowing they have the advantage in terms of the firepower. Luminosity coming in with four Famuses, one in four, no kits, no incendiaries and four smokes. This heavily favors Tai Lu. Yeah. Heavily. So LG again yesterday losing to Mouse Sports on a best of one on cash. It was their choice to play maps that they wanted to get better on. Not sure bigger tournaments are the best place to do that, but it goes to show you how busy the schedule is. These guys don't really have a lot of time to practice them otherwise, and you have to implement them at some point. But it might catch them out again here, as it's map point in the first map of the best of three to Tai Lu, who have already gained my belief and respect. Which doesn't mean anything, but you know, they've got it. Good to know. Have I got it? Yeah, probably not, if I'm honest. I'd love to have your respect. Work harder. Anyway, here we go then. Final round of regulation time. Luminosity, as I said, a very weak buy going into this. Tyloo will be sending four players towards B storage once more. They have got Didi waiting for any aggression towards Squeaky. There's the run boost from FNX. He gets up onto the bomb site. This may be a contact play from Tyloo. Not even going to be doing the mid split here. He's walking into the B side. This could be perfect considering Fur is there. They're kind of caught in towards a boost as well. Molotov's dropping the side. This could be very uncomfortable. Is uncomfortable, but fall in. Oh, he's ran out of ammo. He has to switch to the pistol. Goes down. That's going to be a huge problem because Fur can only get one on the site. It has to be a rotation. And look at the position inside mid right now. DD catches off FNX. This is down to one player for LG. It's Cold Zira. The MVP from the Major. He's got the first one. Found second as well, but the bomb's still planted. He's got big work to do and no kit. The decoy and not a flash. And somebody's flanked it. Tyloo's got map one against LG. Who would have thought? Tyloo, the complete underdog of this tournament, just taking the first map in the best of three against Luminosity Gaming here. Very interesting stuff. Hashtag CSGO to Asia.
Yeah, absolutely. It's their year to establish their scene. They've already got more tournaments than ever before. I, I didn't expect we'd have a team toward the top 10 this year, but Ty Lu said it's in their goal. This is the right foot forward to start it. I'm not going to give it to them yet, obviously, but this is the right foot forward. Knockout Liquid, first map from LG, and uh, impressive, I have to say. Retakes were good. T-sides have been excellent. That's a rarity. We don't often see that from newer teams, but their T-sides have been really good throughout yeah, the weekend. Yeah, just their, their general understanding of the map and the way they're approaching it was very good indeed. Somebody stepping up massively, hitting over 30 kills. They didn't even have to take it to overtime. They did it in regulation, 16-14. Very impressive stuff there. We did see Cold Zero on the last round, tried to do what he can, but it was just a bridge too far in the one on four situation. Did manage to get a couple of frags there, but there it is. We still have two more to go, but that's a great first. You assume four. we have two more to go. I assume, yes, you have. We'll see if that's true or not. We're going to go to a break, and LG is going to need one. They're going to have to take a, a little bit of a breather, reorganize themselves, and get back into this series. Tyloo's up one. We'll see you in a minute.